All right, good morning everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. And today I'm talking about POTS and viral infections. <clears throat> so uh, we've talked about POTS a lot, we've gone through uh, some of the underlying etiologies of it, namely the growing interest that POTS is an autoimmune disorder. And we used to think that POTS was due to small fiber neuropathy that still may be the, maybe a component, so to speak, but it doesn't seem to be the major component. And quite possibly what we were picking up is small fiber neuropathy was actually an autoimmune ganglionopathy is the technical term. So where the immune system makes antibodies that attack the ganglia where the autonomic nervous systems relay to each other. Basically think of it that way. Uh, so that's kind of what we know thus far. We've talked about POTS and anxiety and how so many POTS patients are misinterpreted as having anxiety or panic attacks, misdiagnosed, and because they are young, healthy appearing, typically females of childbearing age, they are chalked up to basically having anxiety disorders when in actuality there's an underlying vascular autoimmune disorder. So on the topic of viral infections, in the autoimmune literature on POTS, they frequently say that there can be a viral trigger to the disorder, but there's actually not a lot of research on this. And so that's why I'm coming on a little bit late today because uh, basically I was trying to scour the literature to find more, more information on this and it's just not there at this point. Keep in mind that POTS is a really newly acknowledged condition in the world of medicine. I mean, I think it was first coined like in the 1990s. The whole autoimmune component wasn't even being discussed until the 2000s. And the verification of autoimmunity at such a high level as 89% of POTS patients having antibodies to adrenaline receptors, that came out last year. I mean, I was reading articles in 2015 basically saying that acetylcholine receptor antibodies were maybe, and I think it was around 13% of POTS patients. Now we're seeing with the appropriate lab technology and sequencing techniques that it can be around 53% of POTS patients have acetylcholine receptor antibodies. So again, POTS is an evolving situation. I know a lot of you are frustrated out there because you, you bring up POTS to your doctors. Maybe your doctors are aware of it. Lots of times I hear that doctors are not really that aware of it. Um, that's no fault per se of your doctors. Lots of times they're, they're there to rule out life-threatening pathology. And again, you come in and you look relatively healthy and you're young uh, to a cardiology office, for example, it's confusing for them. Now, relative to viral infections. So there's not a lot of literature, but what do we know about viral infections and autoimmunity? We know that viral infections frequently are a trigger for autoimmune disorders, and we now know that POTS is an autoimmune disorder, but that's pretty recently recognized. So there's not a plethora of research on this. There is quite a bit of research regarding uh, one prophylactic treatment inducing POTS. I'm not really going to say any more than that, um, and maybe some of you know what I'm talking about, uh, a preventative measure treatment, so to speak, that seems to trigger POTS and um, and that seems to be associated. There's a lot of discussion literature about that, but relative to viruses, um, basically we know that they trigger autoimmunity. And I was trying to bring it up before the broadcast. I was not able to, but out of the Scandinavian journal, Scandinavian cardiovascular journal in 2017, they talked about co-antibodies in POTS. And one of the ones they talked about was Hashimoto. So Hashimoto's thyroiditis is where the immune system attacks the thyroid. So a lot of POTS patients have Hashimoto's. You may have it, you may not, but it's not a bad idea to be checked for it. And independent of your thyroid hormones, the immune count to the thyroid is what is most important. You definitely need to have a thyroid, well, I'm not telling you what to do, but the standard process is to have your thyroid peroxidase antibodies checked, as well as your antithyroglobulin antibodies checked. What we know about Hashimoto's is that 80% of Hashimoto's patients have an Epstein-Barr virus infection living in their thyroid. So that's a big deal. Epstein-Barr has been seen with a number of autoimmune disorders, 
and there's a there's a uh, very popular book out there how, saying the Epstein bar is the cause of all medical chronic illness problems. Basically, um, I don't feel that's quite correct, but it definitely is a co-villain, so to speak, with a lot of these autoimmune disorders. So I have had a lot of POTS patients present, just like is discussed in the autoimmune literature, saying they had a viral infection, then all of a sudden their POTS came on, or they had this preventative treatment and their POTS came on. So something just to be aware of in your history, if you are thinking back, you know, I was fine, I was fine, and then I got mononucleosis, and then I wasn't fine. Well, that may be important, and this is one of two articles published on infectious mononucleosis and POTS, and basically they didn't have any profound conclusions except documenting the association. They said it, they thought it was rare, but I have seen it quite a few times, so I don't think it could be that rare. Um, so yeah, so basically we have that issue. And just know that one autoimmune response can trigger other autoimmune responses too. So let's say, for example, you have Hashimoto's and your immune system is attacking your thyroid. And we know based on that, you have an 80% probability that Epstein-Barr is living in your thyroid. We actually know that you have an 80% probability of two other viruses independently living in the thyroid gland. And perhaps that autoimmune response is enough to spur another autoimmune response. And this is why you see things called uh, autoimmune polyglandular syndromes. It's just like once somebody develops celiac disease, they're more likely to develop Addison's, they're more likely to develop diabetes type 1 and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It's just once these immunological control mechanisms start breaking down, then it's easier for other autoimmune issues to develop. So, you know, maybe in five years we'll find that there's a ton of research on this on this relationship and maybe we'll find that, you know, there was something else. Maybe it's a food that's completely triggering POTS more than we thought of. But that information will come in time. But do know, um, basically that the association of high rates of other autoimmune disorders, including Hashimoto's and lupus uh, in POTS patients is, is important. And those are associated with viral infections. And I hear a lot of you talking about viral infections. So, so that's it. I wish there was more research on this to give to you. That's one of the things I love uh, bringing to all of you. But uh, I'll be back later on this week with another broadcast on POTS, and we'll go from there. Okay, everyone, have a good day.